Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting leet code problem, number 2787, called Ways to Express an Integer as Sum of Powers. It sounds a bit math heavy, but don't worry, we're going to break it down step by step and see that it's actually a classic problem in disguise. Let's get started. So here's the official problem description. We're given two positive integers, n and x, tisa. Our job is to find the number of different ways we can write n as a sum of numbers, but there are a couple of very important rules we need to follow. Okay, let's really simplify the rules. First, the numbers we're adding together aren't just any numbers, they have to be powers. If x is 2, our building blocks are 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and so on. Second, and this is the most critical part, the base numbers we pick have to be unique. For example, if we use 3 squared, we can't use another 3 squared in the same sum. This uniqueness rule is a huge clue about how to solve this. Let's walk through an example. Suppose n is 10 and x is 2. What are the numbers we're even allowed to use? Well, they're the second powers of unique integers. So we have 1 squared which is 1, 2 squared which is 4, 3 squared which is 9, and 4 squared is 16. Wait, that's already bigger than our target of 10, so we can stop there. Our building blocks are just 1, 4 and 9. Now can we combine these to make 10? Let's start with the biggest one, 9. If we use 9 we need to make up the remaining 1. And look, we have a 1 available from 1 squared. Perfect! So 9 plus 1 is a valid combination. That's one way. Are there any others? Well, if we don't use 9, we could try 4 plus 1. That's only 5. So it seems like 3 to the power of 2, plus 1 to the power of 2, is the only solution. The answer is 1. Now whenever you see a problem about choosing a subset of items to reach a specific target value, your brain should scream knapsack, and that's exactly what this is. Think of it like this. We have a backpack that can hold a total weight of n. The items we can put in our backpack are 1 to the power of x, 2 to the power of x, and so on. The weight of each item is its actual value. Because we can only use each base number once. Like, we can take 3 to the power of 2, or not, this is a classic 0-1 knapsack problem. Our goal isn't to maximize value, but to count how many combinations perfectly fill the bag. Since this is a knapsack style problem, dynamic programming is the perfect tool. We'll create an array, let's call it dp. The element at index j in this array will tell us how many ways we can make a sum of exactly j couple of a don. We'll start by creating this array with a size of n plus 1. And we set the very first element, dp at index 0 to 1. This is our anchor. It represents the idea that there is one way to make a sum of 0, and that's by picking no items at all. This will make all the math work out later. Here's the core logic. We're going to introduce our items, 1 to the power of x, then 2 to the power of x, and so on, one at a time. For each new item, we'll go through our dp array and update the counts. A really important detail is that when we update the array for a new item, we have to loop from our target n downwards. If we loop forwards, we might accidentally use the same item multiple times. For example, to make a sum of 6 with the item 3, we might add 3 to a sum of 3 that we just calculated using. The same item 3, looping backwards prevents this. It ensures we're always adding our new item to a sum that was formed using only the previous items. Okay, here is the complete Python code that implements this logic. You can see the DP array initialization, the outer loop that generates our items, and that crucial inner loop that goes backwards. Let's break it down piece by piece so it's crystal clear. First, we set up our variables. The mod variable is just for the modulo operation, which keeps the numbers from getting too big. Then we create our dp array of size n plus 1, filled with zeros. And finally, the most important step, we set dp at index 0 to 1. Again, this represents our starting point, one way to make a sum of 0. Next, we have the outer loop. This loop's job is to generate our building blocks. The variable i represents the base so it goes 1, 2, 3 and so on. Inside the loop we calculate val, which is i raised to the power of x, cos of us. This val is the actual number we might add to our sum. There's also a smart optimization here. If the val we just calculated is already bigger than our target n, there's no point in continuing. Any future values will be even bigger, so we can just break out of the loop early. This is the heart of the algorithm. The inner loop iterates backwards from our target n down to the current item's value val, daughter. Let's look at the update line. To find the new number of ways to make a sum j, we take two things. 
First, the number of ways we could already make J using the previous items. We add to that, the number of ways we could make the smaller sum of J minus val. Because if we could make that smaller sum, we can now just add our current val to it, to achieve J, 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 J. This simple addition correctly accumulates all the possible combinations. So how efficient is this? The space complexity is straightforward. We use a DP array of size n, so it's big O of n. For time complexity, the editorial states big O of n, times the square root of n, we hear Raymond A. Dallas. Let's think about that. The inner loop runs n times. The outer loop for our items runs until the item's value is bigger than n. This happens when the base i is about n to the power of 1 over x. So a more precise time complexity is big O of n times n to the power of 1 over x. The editorial probably simplified it by using x equals 2 as a common example, which gives the square root of n. To wrap things up, what are the big ideas here? First, always be on the lookout for problems that are just the knapsack problem in disguise. If you're picking from a set of items to hit a target, it's a good candidate. Dynamic programming is the go-to solution for this pattern. The update rule we used, where we add the previous ways to the ways of making a smaller target, is super common for counting problems. And remember that clever trick of looping backwards. It's what makes the 01 knapsack work with only a single DP array. And that's all for this one. I hope that breakdown helped you see the logic behind the solution. If it was helpful, please hit that like button and maybe subscribe for more explanations. If you have any questions or a different way of solving it, drop a comment below. And of course, there's always the Boba Fund if you're feeling extra generous. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video.